Good evening. Good evening and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Paula Reed, Mayor of Kingborough. It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to our first meeting for 2023. Uh, tonight is Monday the 16th of January. We don't have anyone here in the public gallery with us this evening, but I'm sure we have people watching at home via YouTube. Being 5.30pm, I now officially declare this meeting open. I wish to advise that council meetings are recorded and made publicly available on our website and in accordance with council's policy, I'll ask the general manager to confirm that the audio recording has started. Confirm, Beth. Thank you. I wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, pay my respects to elders past and present and acknowledge today's Tasmanian Aboriginal community. Our attendees this evening are myself, Councillor Reid, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Gladewright, Councillor Antoli, Councillor Bain, Councillor Cordover, Councillor Dean, Councillor Fox, Councillor Midgley, Councillor Richardson and Councillor Street. From our staff this evening, we have the General Manager, Mr Arnold, Chief Financial Officer, Mr Breen, Director of Engineering Services, Mr Reeve, Director of Governance, Recreation and Property Services, Mr Smee, Director of Environment, Development and Community Services, Dr Fox, our Executive Assistant, Mrs Morton, and the Communications and Engagement Support Officer, Ms Klein. We have no apologies for this evening's meeting. I'd now like to call on Councillor Antoli, who has a matter of... Uh, would like to make a personal explanation. Councillor Antoli. Thank you, Mayor, and a Happy New Year to all those present and those listening. At our December 5 Council meeting, I asked questions about the LGBTQIA plus action plan that was tabled for adoption by councillors. This included understanding the report writing process and timing, which included concerns shared with me from important stakeholders regarding the consultation process. And since that council meeting, I've been able to correspond with the co-chair of the committee about those concerns in more detail. And moreover, I was able to meet with members of the committee and staff who created the report. I shared with them the background to my line of questioning and I went into detail about those concerns. And I'm now satisfied that the action plan was not written in advance of the statistical survey, which I and others were concerned about at the time. In the future, I would like to propose that any report such as this that could have the potential to be contentious be taken to a council workshop prior to going to a council meeting. And I thank the staff and the committee members for their openness in discussion with me and I value their heart for the LGBTQIA plus community and the efforts that they put into the report. Thank you, Councillor Antoli. We are on page one of the agenda now, confirmation of minutes, that the minutes of the open session of council meeting number 24, held on the 19th of December 2022, be confirmed as a true record. I'm looking for a mover and a seconder. I've got a mover in Councillor Fox, seconder in Councillor Gladewright. All those in favour? Against, the motion is carried unanimously. Staying on page one, workshops held since the last council meeting. We had one workshop last Monday evening, the 9th of January. The topic was sports ground user fees. We had a presentation and a discussion regarding various options. And the second topic was crisis accommodation, a presentation and discuss discussion regarding current data and potential sites for accommodation. Moving to page two now, declarations of interest. Does any councillor have a declaration of interest they'd like to make? No, thank you. Staying on page two, transfer of agenda items. Are there any items on the agenda that councillors would like to move from open into closed or closed into open session? No, thank you. Uh, we don't have any members of the public here, so there will be no questions without notice from the public. We do have questions on notice from the public, and just a reminder to those uh, people who are watching at home, if they would like to submit a question um, on notice, that they can do so by emailing us at kc at kingborough.tas.gov.au. We have two questions on notice this evening. The first one was in relation to the enforcement policy from Professor Michael Rowan with an officer response from Mr Basham and Ms Everingham. The second one was from Mr Richard Mount in relation to Davies Road upgrade with an officer response from Mr Reeve. We're on page five now. Questions without notice from councillors. Does any councillor have a question without notice? I've got Councillor Midgley and then Councillor Cordover. Councillor Midgley. Thank you, Mayor. I have a couple of questions. The first one um, is just further information about the Davies Road upgrade. 
uh, Mr Mount did contact me and I suggested that he put a question on notice. Um, as the community is very passionate about um, this project and would really like to see um, pedestrian cycle way included, what uh, communication will, will, be, will we provide back to Kowska um, in regarding the consideration will be given to improving the road? Mr Reeve. Somebody will need to turn their light off, please. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor, um, as I mentioned in the response to this question, um, we're yet to commence a design. Um, the original bid that was um, put forward for this design uh, was to deal with some stormwater issues. Um, bearing in mind um, the comments from the Kowska, how they would also like to see improvements for um, pedestrians and cyclists in that area there, quite happy to have that discussion with them once we've actually moved the design more into a, um, a solid concept design. Thank you very much and Happy New Year Mr Reeve. A few more questions, um, possibly we'll go to Mr Reeve as well and these were sent to me by the Bruni Island Community Association, so I'm echoing there. Um, so. There's quite a few, so I'll just ask some of them. I have, have already sent them to staff. So Bruni Island Community Association is seeking official endorsement from council as a recognised... Can you hear that? Yeah, we can. Sometimes that they why. do react to mobile phones being in proximity. Oh, OK. Is uh, seeking official endorsement from council as a recognised organisation with the appointment of a council representative. Um, they were hoping that this would happen following the disbanding of the Bruni Island Advisory Group. Uh, the General Manager can assist Thank with you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Councillor Vigili, um, my suggestion would be that um, the Bruni Island Community Association would be best advised to put a written request to Council. Um, it may well be that they need to uh, check their terms of reference or indeed their charter to make sure that um, that can be accommodated first. Thank you. I'll let them know. Um, evidently, there's no um, road sealing on Harvey Road and wondering when that is occurring. Mr Reeve. Through you, Mayor. It's imminent. <laughs> Great. I will let them know to look out. Um, yeah, it took ten minutes into the... eight minutes into the first meeting of the year for, for Mr Reeve to come out with the word imminent. We'll count. Um, maintenance of the road... main road between Alona and Luana. Um, evidently there's potholes, spring water on road, guideposts needed replacing. Mr Reeve. Uh, through you, Mayor. So, yes, so they, that's not a council responsibility, that's a Department of State Growth responsibility, but happy to forward on those comments to State Growth. Great, thank you. Do we think Bruni Island Community Association has a contact with State Growth that they would, might go to? or? Uh, I'm not sure if they've got a contact, but I do have contacts. So I'm happy to actually forward the comments on their behalf. Great, thank you. And there is quite a list, but I'll just ask one more because I do have them um, in my email, but I thought it's important as well for councillors to know and I will send you all of the response. Um, dog bags. And I remember Councillor Bastone asking about this um, in her term. They're waiting um, installation of the distribution points and they have volunteers ready to go. Can they please have an update? Mr Reeve. Through you, Mayor. Uh, Imminent. Yes. <laughs> well, they're waiting and we're also waiting as well at the same time there. So as you would be aware, um, Kate Averis will be taking on the um, contracts, both the uh, mainland and Bruni Island. At the moment there, we're waiting the two new builds on the trucks, which have been delayed and delayed and delayed, which is a common thing for everybody across Australia at the moment, unfortunately. Um, however, without that in place, we're relying on the um, existing contract that was doing those particular works there. They don't have the facility to deal with um, dog bags, but um, once we get the trucks in place there, we can look at that a little bit further. Thank you, Councillor Midgley. Next, I had Councillor Cordover and then Councillor Fox and then Councillor Antoli. Thank you, Mayor. My first question is about the acoustics at the Kingborough Community Hub. So this is something that's come up a, a few times, but I was just wondering if there is an update about um, what the options are regarding soundproofing the opening wall at the Kingborough Community Hub in the main room, um, 
many constituents have mentioned to me that when there's a lecture or a forum or movie nights, things like that, uh, when those are taking place, if they're skateboarders or rollerbladers using the concrete area behind that wall, then the noise can be very disruptive. Uh, are there any further updates about what options there are in terms of improving acoustics in the Kingborough Community Hub? Um, I will ask a staff member to address that, but before I do, just um, what we're tr the message we're trying to get out is that um, roller skating and skateboarding are, are actually not permitted in that area, even though it's a lovely surface for it, um, for the reasons you've indicated. When we've, we've hired out rooms or there are events taking place, it's very distracting. So we're certainly trying to get the message out to the community that's not the place to uh, do those activities, so we don't permit skates, roller skates, roller blades, skateboards or bikes in that area. Um, but uh, Mr Smee? No, no, no. Anyone? Mr Reeve? Anyone? We might need to take that bit on notice. There are those sandwich boards that are seen there that say... Yeah, no, skateboarding. But just with any, anything else? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Three, Mayor. Look, I'm, I'm happy to have a stab at it. Um, certainly the, <laughs> the particular building has been designed for a particular purpose there and it's got a lot of hard space in there which makes it challenging from an acoustic mm. perspective there, as you'd appreciate. Um, I'm not sure whether there has been um, an uh, acoustic review that has been undertaken independently. Um, that may be a possibility to actually have a look at that and see whether or not there's any other options, um, albeit um, small retrofits that could be considered there to actually improve the situation. Thank you, Mr. Reeve. Thank you, Mayor. And I think I think most people do understand, and I try and explain that, you know, a, a building will never... It, it, this building particularly needs to be many things to many different user groups, and so as a result, you know, you can't be a perfect um, music concert hall necessarily, but anything we can do to try and make it better, uh, I'm sure will be appreciated. My next questions, very quickly, through you, Mayor, are about the General Manager's Diary. I'm interested about the uh, Derwent Estuary Program AGM from the 9th of November. Uh, is there any quick update that we can have about the Derwent Estuary Program, what their main body of work looks like in, in the year to come as it relates to Kingborough Council? So, yes, because we're having a workshop on it in a few weeks' time. So, okay. that'll give you a I'll full, wait for that. full, sure. o full overview. Thank you. My next question about the General Manager's Diary relates to the, in company with the Mayor, um, Minister Street, uh, discussing the Kingborough Sports Precinct. Are there any updates from that that would be edifying to the community to know about the Kingborough Sports Precinct and the Minister? Just trying to remember the meeting. <laughs> General Manager. Yeah. Through you, Mayor. Councillor Cordova, um, a number of councillors were actually uh, in attendance last Friday when Minister Street um, paid uh, a formal visit to this, this council. Um, it was touched on uh, during that particular discussion, but I'm happy to repeat it so it's on the public record, that um, the Mayor took the opportunity to um, push the point that the sports uh, centre itself has, has reached capacity in many areas uh, and is you know, in need of uh, an upgrade, um, particularly in relation to netball, for example, uh, just to, to give one example. Um, the Minister took that on board and... Uh, you know, we'll continue those discussions. Thank you. And finally, through you, Mayor, my last question relates to the meeting uh, on December the 1st with a representative from Bruny Island Cheese Company to discuss tourism signage. And my question really is actually more broadly about um, tourism. Well, firstly, is there any update from that meeting that, that you care to share um, with the public? But secondly, uh, what are we doing with, with respect to tourism signage on Bruny? So that was specifically, that meeting was specifically in relation to um, signage about public toilets and how um, we direct um, visitors to the island to um, the nearest public toilets. Uh, and so there have been discussions with the Department of State Growth about having a sign as people come off the ferry so that they're aware that they have a certain distance to the first available public toilets. Um, and I don't believe that signage has been installed as yet. Do you want to add to, to that? Uh, thank you, Mia. No, you're correct. It hasn't been installed as yet. Um, but uh, those discussions are continuing with DSG. Uh, in addition, uh, council officers have undertaken an audit of uh, the council signage on Bruny Island uh, in relation to public toilets. 
uh, it's fair to say uh, that we have an historical legacy uh, of a mishmash of signs that don't necessarily conform to current Australian standards and we uh, have given an undertaking to address that. And um, the other thing I would say is that uh, we have updated our website um, so that there's a direct link to the Australian public toilet map um, for clarity for um, first time visitors and tourists alike. Thank you, that's all, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next I've got Councillor Fox and then Councillor Antoli. Councillor Fox. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Um, at meetings of mayors and general managers of Greater Hobart Councils, um, could there please be a meeting, um, a report of, um, to council of topics discussed, issues raised um, by the mayor, decisions for consideration by council prior or after meetings, and opportunities for council to raise topics for discussion? Uh, yes, although the um, certainly that um, that can be considered. Um, the purpose of those meetings are to um, deal with the business of the Greater Hobart City deal. Um, so we are constrained by um, discussing issues directly related to that, rather than. Um, Broadening the scope of the work that that um, that that group does, um, I will need to. I'll take that on notice. I just need to give that some thought as to how that would um, how that would take place. But certainly, um, yeah, happy to provide some feedback. Thank you, Councillor Antoli. Thank you, Mayor. Um, last week, I believe yourself and some of the uh, staff met with, uh, some of the councillors met with Minister Nick Street, uh, uh, Minister for Local Government, and the issue of an ambulance station in the channel was raised. Are you able to share with us, uh, and myself included, many in the community are uh, really anxious about getting something happening. Uh, could you share any update with the community about what was discussed, any time frames given, any commitments given about moving that along and if not what can we do to uh, respectfully lobby the government mm -hmm. to move it along um, look there weren't any um, there, there weren't any commitments given certainly Minister Street was interested um, to hear of some of the concerns expressed by people who live in the Channel region about delays in ambulances attending their call outs um, and the significant di um, distances that people are, that the ambulances are needing to travel quite often from, from Hobart. Um, it actually uh, it came to be discussed because I had been approached by a um, person in Snug who believes they had a, a suitable property for. Um, uh, such an ambulance station to be located, so I've passed along those details to uh, to the minister and asked that he uh, take that on board. I think they're very aware of the the fact that we are trying to advocate for this on behalf of our residents, and likewise, we also discussed um, again the concept of a um, uh, an emergency services hub in Kingborough that would comprise of SES fire, emergency and ambulance. And I know that's something that certainly uh, the government seemed quite keen on in the event that the AAD site becomes vacant. Um, and just today I had a meeting with our police inspector here and he, is, he was expressing to me the, the need for that as well because they literally are bursting at the seams at the police station. So in the event in future that we, our population continues to grow and they get additional officers um, at the station, they've got nowhere to put them. Um, so, yeah, there's, they're certainly very frustrated over there as well. Thank you. That's helpful information. Do you feel that the, the government is probably leaning towards an, an AED hub versus investing in a channel ambulance station? What's your sense? They haven't, they haven't indicated either way, um, but we've made it clear that both things are needed. I think, the, uh, I think probably the urgency is around the, um, the channel ambulance yeah. station, um, and then the longer term plan for um, a one stop shop, as has been done in Sorrel and, and elsewhere in the state, that seems to be working very well. But if we don't start planning for it now, then we're going to be in trouble in 10 years' time when mm. there is capacity issues. Thank you, Mayor. Over the Christmas break, I was contacted by phone from various people, I don't know if it was coordinated or not, who live in Snug Village, 
who have a lot of anxiety when it comes to calling an ambulance because they've heard a lot of horror stories of people waiting a long time and mentioned one particular case that I won't go into. So it was, it's uh, timely that you met with the Minister and brought mm -hmm. it up. So thanks for advocating for that and we'll try and hopefully be posted on it. Yep, thank you. Next, I have Councillor Dean. Yeah, look, I just wanted to also follow up, um, as did Councillor Midgley, uh, Mr Mount's question about Davies Road, more procedurally. Um, is there any scope or process by which um, our advisory groups get an opportunity to have an input into that design process Mr Reeve talked about earlier? I know in my neck of the woods there were some stormwater upgrades like Davies Road will be, um, do our safety, our cycling, any of those um, advisory, uh, access committee, sorry, get um, an opportunity to have a say, I suppose, or, yeah, I guess that's my question. Mr Reeve. Uh, through you, Mayor, it really does depend on the project a little bit. So, for example, um, if we were doing something such as uh, the access ramp we did down Kingston Beach or some of the larger projects we've done on in Kingston Park, those ones would um, go to the access committee or if they're to do with things that are cycling related there where you would like that input from that advisory group there, it would go to that as well. Um, but you wouldn't necessarily take every single project to any of those particular committees there unless it was relevant. Having said that, um, as Councillor Midgley um, asked, um, if it was something which had a, a, an interest to the cycling committee, which this one does, it would probably be mentioned within that advisory committee. Um, because the community has a vested interest, you would deal through the community group as well. And then you'd also deal with your individual property owners who might be affected by the direct works as well. So they do get covered, um, albeit just in a slightly different way, that's all. So it'd probably be the, I guess, the project manager who would make that call to say, oh, look, this is probably one of interest, um, not the other way around in terms of knowing what's coming up in terms of the capital works project. Through you, Mayor. So, so we, we have to actually make um, determinations on any particular project there as to what areas that needs to, uh, what areas need to be considered there. Um, so there's a list of those particular areas. Um, so some are very straightforward there and just involves some communication with the um, affected residents. Others, um, actually people, the wider group, wider community have a vested interest in it, in which case then we would um, you know, deal with them at the same time. So that particular area, for example, um, I know the community has an interest in all the walkability and cycleways through there, which is one of the prompts for us to do the feasibility study for the uh, continuation of the Snug to Margate path through that area. Um, so we know they have an interest in that. They also have a very active community there, which is great. Um, and so it's it's a community that you would want to actually involve um, as well at the same time, if for nothing else, just to actually understand where they're coming from and for them to actually understand what can be achieved and what can't be achieved as well. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bain. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion in the community about the uh, grass being quite overgrown throughout the municipality over the last few weeks or so. Um, and I believe the reason given has been that higher than normal rainfall along with some fine weather, which is fair enough. Um, but I think we've experienced that a couple of years in a row now, so I'm just wondering if there's anything we can put in place moving forward to potentially try and keep on top of the situation between you know, pre, pre and post Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mr Reeve. Uh, through you, Mayor. Yes, we try and build into our budgets a little bit of fat there to allow us to do some individual cuts in additional areas when we need to. Um, so it's very difficult to actually tell what each year will actually bring. Um, we can make, we can obviously look at the long range forecasts there, but whether it comes to fruition or not is, you know, in the lap of the gods. Um, but we do allow for some money in our budget there to do individual areas, not a, not a complete cut uh, again, but um, certainly allow for some other areas to be done if they're causing issues. So I would encourage if people actually have ones that are raised that are in particular areas, if you can nominate where they actually are, we can have a look at those on a case-by-case uh, -case basis. Any further questions? If not, we're moving to questions on notice from councillors. There were three, the first one from Councillor Richardson in relation to work on Sprouls Road with a response from Mr Reeve. Next one is from Councillor Cordover uh, in relation to road line markings with a response from Mr Reeve. And the third one from Councillor Midgley in relation to Auburn Road and a response from Mr Reeve. At the time of the um, 
agenda being printed, there were no petitions still being actioned, uh, but petitions received in the last period. We have a petition in relation to revise and recall the draft local provisions schedule with a recommendation on page seven, and I'm looking for a mover and a seconder, please. Moved Councillor Fox, seconded Councillor Street. Councillor Fox. I think this is a procedural motion that I'm moving just to accept the petition. Thank you. She might have wanted to speak on it. Um, I'll put the recommendation then. It's moved by Councillor Fox and seconded by Councillor Street. All those in favour? Aye. Against? The motion is carried. We move now to page eight, officers' reports to Council. Uh, consent to lodgement of application for a habitable building outside the building area at 21 Graham Street, Electrona, with a recommendation on page 12. I'm looking for a mover and a seconder. Moved Councillor Cordover, seconded Councillor Gladewright. Councillor Cordover. Thank you, Mayor. So the purpose of the report is for Council to consider whether or not to grant consent in accordance with Covenant 1 of the Sealed Plan number 173543 to enable the construction of a habitable building partially outside the building area. Uh, this is at 21 Graham Street, Electrona. In essence, uh, I support the officer's recommendation, which is for us to determine to grant consent under the Covenant. Um, and I will briefly take us through why I think that that is an appropriate recommendation. In essence, what we're looking at is a narrow lot of 1,930 square metres. It's a linear block with an elbow towards the east uh, with a boundary on Council's recreation area on the waterfront and the lot fronts Graham Street to the south and the fish processing facility to the north in the light industrial zone. And the building area is approximately 211 square metres in area extending 16 metres into the lot from the frontage. So what we're looking at here is that the proposed building would extend beyond the building area to the north by approximately 3.8 metres and would include the north facing elevated deck and steps, which would provide for outdoor amenity adjacent to the upper level living area. Um, in essence, it's a fairly straightforward and I believe it to be a, a minor um, intrusion into the uh, outside of the building area, and so I think it's acceptable. Um, also worth noting that the, when it comes to item 4.13, the proposed building uh, is in proximity to mature eucalyptus ovata of very high conservation value. And if you read that paragraph, um, you'll see that there is a, um, one aspect which is uh, a small incursion into the tree uh, root protection zone and then the assessment also considered the impact of the construction of the driveway and determined an unacceptable level of encroachment by the driveway with cumulative incursions of up to 34%. Uh, recommendations were included in the assessment which advised that the tree is able to be retained by designing and or employing alternative non-destructive non construction methods. Um, as it says at item eight, there are likely no risks to council and so I think we are um, I, yeah, and so therefore I, I support the officer's recommendation to grant consent. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll just note for the record, Councillor Street left the room at 5.58pm. Uh, Councillor Fox and then Councillor Antoli. Um, I guess I have a question um, in relation to the effect of... I, I support the recommendation, but uh, in, the, in the case of a complaint from the resident, um, if they are on their deck and they're experiencing um, odour from the fish processing, processing um, factory, will, that, will this approval give them any right to object to that situation? Dr Fox, are you able to help us with that one? Uh, through you, Mayor. I, I just would make the point before we get too far along this that this um, application hasn't been assessed um, under the planning uh, requirements. So in terms of odour and how it meets, how it may meet those um, requirements, what you're being asked today is, is just around the covenants and approval to the covenants and then it will go into that assessment process. One of the considerations in that assessment process will be that odour and, and the likelihood of um, that impacting on the well-being and quality of life of the people who might live in that dwelling um, and if they're sitting on their, on their veranda and what that might mean. My sense is that um, from this initial advice that there, um, it is considered that given that it's an, effectively an outdoor space that that wouldn't be a, a big concern. It's not, um, you know, you can move away from that, there's airflow and all of that sort of thing. So 
my sense is that it, it wouldn't likely be um, something that would raise um, concerns that would stop that development going ahead. In terms of if they were sitting on their deck in 10 years' time, if it was all approved and it went through the process and they were sitting there and they, um, and they smelled something, um, I don't think there would be grounds to, um, to then complain about that in terms of the, um, the fish processing facility um, because that is, that's where they've moved to and that's the, the zoning that they're within. But I don't know if there's any, any thoughts over here, but my sense from um, the environmental health perspective and investigating that sort of odour, they've moved into that locality, um, it's within that zone, it's, yeah, it, it's, it, I don't think there would be grounds for complaint. Councillor Antoli. Thank you, Mayor. This, is, this question is probably more for my education than anything else. The uh, impact assessment report is extensive and uh, would not have been cheap, but I'm assuming it was needed to satisfy the covenants. It's not, an, it's not probably a normal requirement, is that correct? Dr Fox. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, I imagine that they would have needed to have that for the um, planning assessment anyway. So they would have, in, in getting that report, they're covering off on the requirements of the covenant as well as what they would be needing for the assessment report. So that rather extensive report would probably be a standard requirement, is what you're saying? In this situation where they are, um, they are looking at potentially affecting that tree protection zone, yes. Mm, okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Cordover, did you want to sum up? No? If not, I'll put the motion then. It was moved by Councillor Cordover, seconded by Councillor Gladewright. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Motion is carried unanimously. No, I had you seconded it. Yep. Yep. Councillor Street has also returned to the room, meanwhile, at 5.59pm. Uh, we turn now to page 73, Code of Conduct for Councillors, with a recommendation on page 74. Looking for a mover and a seconder. Moved Councillor Gladewright, seconded Councillor Midgley. Councillor Gladewright. Thank you. The purpose of this report is to review the Code of Conduct for Councillors in accordance with the provisions of the Local Government Act. Um, council officers have confirmed with the Office of Local Government and DPAC that no amendments have been made to the gazetted 26th of December 2018 model code of conduct and as such only minor administrative amendments have been made to the preamble together with the inclusion of gender neutral language. Um, it's council is required within three months after each ordinary election to review its code of conduct and as such the recommendation is that we note the review and adopt the reviewed code of conduct for councillors. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. It's uh, as printed on page 74 of the agenda. It was moved by Councillor Gladewright, seconded by Councillor Midgley. All those in favour? Against? The motion is carried unanimously. We turn now to the Civic Centre flag policy with a recommendation on page 92. I'm looking for a mover and a seconder, please. Moved Councillor Gladewright, seconded Councillor Street. Councillor Gladewright. Thank you. The purpose of this report is to present a draft Civic Centre flag policy for council consideration and approval. Um, the fourth flagpole has now been installed on the southern end of the entrance to the forecourt of the Civic Centre um, and the fourth pole will be available for flying community flags. Um, this report also outlines an expression of interest process to populate the annual community flag schedule. Um, the Council will seek expressions of interest from individuals and organisations to add community flags to the schedule that symbolise and celebrate Kingborough's diverse community and that are consistent with Council's values and commitment to inclusiveness as outlined in our strategic plan and other corporate policies and strategies. Um, so as such I commend the motion and I hope that it gets some support from the other councillors. Thank you, Councillor Gladright. Further speakers? We've, we have workshopped this extensively. Councillor Dean? Yeah, look, I just want to say thank you to Dr Fox for uh, having, after workshop that, putting this together. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that roster filling up. I know that it is empty at the moment, so obviously 
we'll do our best to encourage everyone to get on that. And um, yeah, once again, well done to Dr. Fox, but also the mayor, I believe, who was um, very pivotal in getting that fourth uh, flagpole up. So I'll definitely be supporting this one. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Further contributions? Councillor Bain. I uh, just have a question. Under the guidelines, uh, so 6.1.4, where it talks about in general requests will be dealt with on a first come, first served basis. I gather that's after we've put the 12 months in place. So it won't be for the expression of interest process. Correct. Yep. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Gladright, did you want to sum up? No. Oh, sorry, Councillor Richardson. I was just going to clarify it says in there that uh, nominations can be made by an individual or an organisation, so so anybody can put forward a nomination for any reason. Correct. Uh, Councillor Midgley. Thank you, and yes, thank you uh, to Dr Fox and the Mayor for putting this forward, and it has been a process, I think, when I asked if we could fly the rainbow flag maybe three or four years ago when I first came on Council, yeah. so things happen, councillors, just takes a little time and patience, <laughs> but um, yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, could councillors be sent um, the document as well so we can distribute to groups? That would be really great. Thank you. We can help, all help together. Thank you. No further discussion. No need to sum up. I'll put the recommendation then. It's as printed on page 92. It was moved by Councillor Gladright, seconded by Councillor Street. All those in favour? Against, the motion is carried unanimously. Turn now to page 100, the Kingborough Community Safety Committee minutes from the 12th of December meeting with the recommendation on page 101. Looking for a mover and a seconder. I've got a mover in Councillor Gladright and a seconder in Councillor Midgley. Councillor Gladright. Thank you. There are two components of this motion. Firstly, um, that, the, that we note the minutes of the Kingborough Community Safety Committee. And secondly, um, the motion is asking us to write a letter to the Minister for Infrastructure and Transport seeking agreement to consider upgrading the Huon Highway Leslie Road intersection to contemporary safety and other standards, noting the Huon Highway corridor study and increased traffic volumes and heavy vehicle traffic through the intersection. So um, this was brought to the safety committee by one of our Leslie Vale residents. Um, he's sent me some talking points here. So. The Huon Highway was constructed in, back in 1968 and since then there have been no improvements to that intersection. Um, down the road at the Summerleys um, intersection and up the road at the Sandfly intersection have had considerable improvements to those um, two locations. Um, here in um, this part of the road, though, there has been a huge increase in the number of people living in the area. Um, there are some um, very busy businesses that are operating there. There's the landscape suppliers on one side of the road and the um, fantastic advanced tree nursery on the other side of the road, and both of those sets of clients are often um, entering that intersection with trailers. Um, the quarry is also um, accessing the highway at that point with really large, big trucks that are trying to enter the, the road where the cars are flying up the hill from Kingston or flying into Kingston from Huonville at 100 kilometres an hour. Um, I know myself, I've, my um, kids go to a family daycare up there and it's pretty hairy because when you're turning right, you come up the hill and then you sit in the middle waiting for a break in the traffic so you can turn right and all the cars are flying past you on the left at 100 kilometres. So it does feel like um, there are some safety concerns and I think it definitely warrants us advocating on, be on behalf of the community there by writing this letter. So I hope that we can get support from this from around the table. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gladright. Any further discussion? Councillor Midgley. Thank you, Mayor. I just thought for um, new councillors, it would be good to understand this process in regards to committees and then writing letter and absolutely support this, but just for us to understand how then decisions at committee meetings then come to council. Yes, so that it, that's an important point. If any of the, uh, whether it be access committee, bike committee or the safety committee, if there are motions that pass at those um, meetings, then they have to be subject to a 
report to council like this so that council can then endorse the action um, before then the letter is written. So if this passes then, that then um, gives me the authority to write on behalf of council to raise this with the state government. Thank you. Councillor Midgley, uh, is there any further discussion? If not, I will, do you want to sum up? No. So it was moved by Councillor Gladry, seconded by Councillor Midgley. It's as printed on page 101. All those in favour? Against, the motion is carried. We turn now to page 111, the Kingborough Bicycle Advisory Committee Community Representation Nominations with a recommendation on page 113. I'm looking for a mover. I believe I've got a mover in Councillor Midgley and a seconder in Councillor Dean. Councillor Midgley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so, councillors, we put out four committee nominations um, and we have a number of people in the community who write their interest, as you can see, in the council agenda. Um, Councillor Dean and I met uh, to have a look at the people who did um, apply and we have decided on a list which I have forwarded to um, Ms Morton as well. If I don't know what the process is, Mayor, if we want to sort of put the recommendation of people that we've put forward... Yep, um, so, yep, so you can do that. That would be so. That's the the top ones. There are the ones that you're proposing. Yes. Yep. So there are a number of factors in regards to this. Um, last time I did actually have I think it was 18 applicants, and I called them all and did a bit of an interview. I will say that this time I actually didn't. I've had a bit of a busy summer, um, and I do know there are one, two, three four existing committee members um, who have reapplied again. So David McQuillan, Rob Shears, Peter Tuft and Angela Wilson. Um, Mark Donnellan did a tender committee meeting and I do I did actually um, encourage Emmeline Jones to apply. He cycles um, from Howden to work in town, dropping off two kids um, along the way on his cargo bikes. I thought that was a really um, great person to have. So there are a range of people who um, ride with their children. Um, the areas that they live cover from Huntingfield, Kingston, Howden, Snug, Taruna, Blackmans Bay, Kettering and Margate. We did have a Bruni Island resident um, last time but they didn't apply. So that's a list we've come up with. Happy to, and, well, happy to hear any comments or questions or anything like that. But thank you um, everybody who did apply um, for the committee. It is a commitment. It's a voluntary, um, you know, commitment that they have to attend the meetings. I thank those who um, decided not to return again last time, especially um, Suzanne Betts, who was on the committee for a very number of years, and we did a final committee meeting and a thank you and acknowledge them to them as well. So, yeah, happy to hear any questions or debate. Thank you very much. Councillor Midgley, are there any further comments? So the recommendation now becomes, um, we'll drop those names, thank you very much. So the, the following nominees be appointed as members of the Kingborough Bicycle Advisory Committee. Um, as printed on the screen then, it's Mark Donnellan, Joyce DeMortier, Emlyn Jones, Kelvin Lewis, David McQuillan, Rob Shears, Peter Tuft and Angela Wilson. Um, so all those, I'll, I'll put that recommendation. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Motion is carried unanimously. We now move to the audit panel charter with a recommendation on page 126. I'm looking for a mover and a seconder. Moved Councillor Gladewright, seconded Councillor Bain. Councillor Gladewright. Thank you. The purpose of this report is to propose changes to the current audit panel charter. Um, the audit panel recently made the decision to recommend to Council that the old charter be scrapped and that the model charter recommended by the Local Government Association be adopted with minor changes to adapt to the operations of the panel. Um, it was considered by the panel that the model charter was more concise and easier to read. Um, and there is also an attached code of conduct for audit panels as recommended by the model charter. Um, so the recommendation is that council approves the new audit panel charter as attached. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Antoli. Thank you very much, Mayor. Through you, um, yes, in favour of this in general, just a probity question, were there any areas in the old charter that you felt were superior to the new and could, could slash should they be included? Uh, Mr Breen. 
Uh, yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, look, essentially, uh, we compared the two charters, and uh, there was only a couple of minor areas where we imported some information from our old charter into the new charter, but primarily we found it was just a lot easier to read, a lot more concise, and uh, sort of summed up the, uh, the requirements in a, a very um, concise manner. Councillor Fox. I know it's just historical, but I was wondering what the previous charter was modelled on or whether we wrote that ourselves. Mr Breen. Oh, yeah, through you, Mayor. Yeah, like essentially, uh, the initial charter that we had was uh, something that um, um, I think the audit panel put together themselves with some information from, I think, the uh, company directors uh, area. Uh, we, in 2018, when the Local Government Association put out the model charter, uh, there was some extensive work done by one of the audit panel members to try and mould our charter with the model charter, uh, but I think it just made it a bit bigger and cumbersome, so it was, that was the reason that it was decided to make the change. Any further questions, comments? If not, I'll put the motion. It was moved by Councillor Gladewright, seconded by Councillor Bain. All those in favour? Aye. Against? The motion is carried unanimously. We turn now to page uh, 144, the financial report for December 2022, with a recommendation on page 146. Looking for a mover and a seconder. Moved Councillor Gladewright, doing all the heavy lifting tonight, and seconded Councillor Street. Councillor Gladewright. Um, thank you. The purpose of this report is to provide the December 2022 financial report information to Council for review. Um, so I note that the forecast result for 22-23 of 129,000 underlying deficit, which is down 150,000 on the original budget. So when you look at the report, you can see we're up in some areas and down in some other areas. Um, and I guess this um, really is highlighting the inflationary pressures on council um, as it seems to be affecting everybody at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Gladright. Councillor Bain. Uh, just a couple of questions, Mayor. Um, the employee cost being $172,000 over, I'm just clarification, is that that's something we see normally this time of year and it just catches up? Mr Breen. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Look, essentially, um, uh, I think since COVID, there's been this real trend of people not taking, or staff, sorry, not taking uh, leave um, particularly, I guess, uh, the overseas type leave and, and even some of the leave to the mainland. Um, so that, that sort of creates a, an additional provision for us uh, in the early stages of the year. Um, January, February, into March, we tend to see a lot of leave and, and most of that leave isn't replaced. So you know, we just go down a staff person for that short period of time. So provision tends to come back down. So the hope would be by about March we'd start to be back on track. Just another question, the, the $50,000 uh, towards recruitment expenses, what type of expenses are they? Mr Breen. Yeah, through you, Mayor. So essentially we don't um, put any budget in for the cost associated with recruitment and we only tend to use recruitment services um, when we can't replace a position or we've got a senior role to fill. Um, the majority of those costs were associated with filling the, uh, the HR role, my manager people in safety, uh, so we in, employed an agency for that. Uh, there were some costs associated with other roles where we've had to, uh, um, to, to use professional services to, to source that role and they generally charge a percentage uh, cost associated with uh, whatever the role is involved. Councillor Bain, any further questions? Uh, I can see you contemplating one. <laughs> no, I did, I did find a little... Uh, Error where the wrong financial year was referenced, but I'm just trying to find it because I know you like attention to detail, so I was trying to pick it up. Well, I can come back to you while you look for it, Councillor Antoli. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Bain has ticked off a question in my mind, and that is around recruitment cost. And maybe is, is, it, is it right and wise going forward that we actually make a contingency in the budget for recruitment? Because staff are not getting easier to find. It is a burden on the staff to constantly have to manage that themselves. Thoughts? Mr Breen. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Yeah, uh, I think we're starting to see that uh, probably over the last 12 months, 18 months, we're starting to see the challenges associated with uh, um, particularly our staff are flat out all the time you know, with only you know, one and sort of a half people in that sort of area. Um, 
in the recruitment space. So yeah, it, clearly it'll be something we need to look at for next financial year. Correct. Councillor Bain, did you find it? No, no, okay, okay Councillor Cordova. Thanks, a quick question through you, Mayor. I'm looking at page 149, investments in uh, cash investments and borrowings. This is for December 22. But my question is just broadly, what's the theory behind why we have multiple investment accounts? So the interest rate, for example, on my state four is 4.25%, whereas on Bendigo four, it's 3.3%. Can, can we just um, broadly hear about why, why there's that amount of money in each? I assume it's because of the vesting date or the... Anyway, I'm interested to know why we have those different ones. Mr Breen. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, so under our policy, we've got a, a risk-based approach to our investments. So uh, we certainly limit the amount of funds we can have in any one entity, depending on their, uh, their actual credit rating. So that's the reason that we, we uh, will share the money around various uh, financial institutions. And rates at the moment tend to be very much based on timing. So as the rates go up, uh, now, a, a new investment comes through. So, for instance, the Bendigo one, that was recently uh, reinvested for, I think it was certainly a number well over four, so it might be 4.2, 4.25, something along those lines. So, the rates are very much dependent on timing, but the actual reason for the, uh, the different investments is, is around risk. Councillor Bain. Yes, yeah, so that's page 193, the capital expenditure table. And I think it's a template, so it's worth picking up. Um, I think the financial year should be 22, 23 instead of 21, 22. Thank you, Mr. Breen has noted that and, is, and looks rather apologetic. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Gladright. Um, can I just ask a question? Forgive me if this is a silly question, but what does... No I... question is a silly okay. question. I <laughs> once learned at a leadership <laughs> training thing. What's an IMG adjustment? I'm looking at the capital expenditure as well. Mr Reeve. Uh, through you, Mayor. Yeah, um, very simply put there, we have a, an internal group that involves officers all the way across council there that actually manages our capital process there. So that's partly to do with... Um, it's inf the IMG stands for Infrastructure Management Group. Um, so it's partly to do with actually developing the budgets in the first instance that come to council, but it also is about the monthly monitoring of the capital budgets as well. Um, as part of that, there's some terms of reference in, in, uh, in terms of variations and the processes those variations will go through. So that'll go through from um, anything from my level to being able to actually approve it within that level, IMG, the general manager, and finally council. So quite often you'll see reports coming up to council there. That's because the variations are large enough that they're required to actually go through council. So that's in a nutshell what an IMG variation is. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Councillor Gladewright, did you want to sum up? No, thank you. I'll put the recommendation as printed in the agenda that Council endorses the attached financial report as at the 31st of December 2022. Moved by Councillor Gladewright, seconded by Councillor Street. All those in favour? Aye. Against, the motion is carried unanimously. Uh, moving now to uh, notices of motion. At the time the agenda was printed, there were no notices of motion that had been received. And that takes us to page 202, confirmation of items to be dealt with in closed session. Um, I'm looking for a mover and a seconder. I have a mover in Councillor Bain, seconded Councillor Cordova. All those in favour? Against, the motion is carried. So thank you to those who have been watching at home. This now means that the um, uh, open session of Council is... Uh, ending and uh, in accordance with Kimber Council meeting audio recording guidelines policy, recording of the open session of the meeting will now cease. Open session of Council adjourned at 6.23pm. <laughs>